Let's look at the logistic model, which is a natural extension uh, modification of the exponential growth model, or it can be used for expansion, to modify exponential decay as well. Um, it's a situation where you expect, it's going to be used in a situation where you expect exponential growth initially, but capped at some maximum value so that the growth starts to slow down and then goes to an asymptote. Um, there's fairly simple way to modify an exponential function. I'm going to call this time, but let's call this y for sort of a generic output variable. It's a very, fairly simple way to modify uh, an exponential function to have this behavior. And this is often called, like in a population example, which is the most common example for this, called the carrying capacity. So like if you have a habitat, some sort of environment that a species lives in, and this is the population, then that's the maximum population that can live in that situation, in that um, that habitat. But it really doesn't have to be population. Any kind of exponential growth that then gets damped out and asymptotic to a constant value is something you could plausibly use a logistic model for. Okay, so let me just trot out. There's various ways of deriving this from scratch, but that's not my intention in this video. Let me trot out the model that actually does that. Okay, the claim is that this kind of function has this kind of behavior, and I think I'm going to save it for a second video, sort of an algebraic derivation of why would this, why would really we really expect this to have this behavior? But what I want to do is just use the calculator and an example um, to show you, do a little, do it experimentally to show you that it really does have the right behavior. So I'm going to graph 200 over 1 plus 4 e to the minus 0.5t. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it on a TI emulator. So those of you using a TI calculator, it should look somewhat like what you have on the calculator. So I put in a y equals 200 over 1 plus 4 e to the minus 0.5x. The, don't forget the parentheses. It, it, of course, wants an x here, but I want to usually think of that as a time variable. Um, I did the window from minus 10 to 20, so somewhat symmetrical, but not perfectly symmetrical about x equals 0. And then the uh, y min is basically 0 to 250. And you've seen the graph. I flashed it up there. So the graph starts out definitely with what looks like exponential growth. Then it gets to a point of greatest increase. That is, it turns out, exactly halfway up to the asymptote. And then it tails off. In fact, it's symmetric if you rotate it around this halfway point. Then this rotates to this, this rotates to this. It's actually perfectly symmetric, which is something that's kind of fun to show. Um, and it caps off at 200. And that's not a coincidence. Look at what we had for the formula. The 200 is exactly the numerator. So that's the first really big observation about this model, is that that numerator is exactly that asymptote value, which is really convenient, because that's one of the most important things about this model, is that it has that asymptote. Okay, So this guy is that new horizontal asymptote up here. And so that's the role of A. So really important is that A is just, if you write it in exactly this way, and it, that has to be a 1 here, the crucial thing is, there's, a, there's other ways you might see this model written down, very similar versions. If that's a 1, then the numerator is exactly the carrying capacity. So that's one reason to write it in this way, as opposed to other useful ways. Okay. So that's that upper horizontal asymptote. It'll never get bigger than A, but it will get close to it, arbitrarily close to it eventually. Okay. So what about the meaning of B and R? Well, R is in the, exactly the slot for like a, a rate, a growth rate. It's a little bit weird because it's a negative, and I was talking about how it starts out with exponential growth, but look where it is. It's in the denominator. So it's not totally implausible to think those kind of cancel each other out, and that this has something to do with an E to the RT. So, in fact, that part is proportional to e to the rt. And in fact, all you have to do is squint a little bit. And I claim if you just erase the 1 and simplify, you're actually going to get the left-hand part of the graph to a good approximation. So where's my eraser? OK. So um, let me put it up here. My claim, and I'll, I'll verify this on the calculator. And in the other video, I'll, I'll prove it more algebraically. The claim is that y is approximately equal to 200 over or e to the minus 0.5t. OK, so that is 200 over 4 is 5. And then that flips to a plus. Hey, that's exponential growth. 
And that is when t is large negative. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm analyzing it for t large positive, it becomes very close to a, and for t large negative, in fact, it becomes, well, very small for one thing, very close to zero, but more, more precisely, it's um, exponential growth with an a factor in front of it that's just the quotient of those two numbers and the exponential growth rate, which is exactly this r. Okay, so if you don't believe me, you can experiment with that. I'll show what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and plug that in as a y2. Oh, that's 50. My bad. Um, 50. You're probably wondering what the heck that was about. 50 second e to the o. 0.5, and I'm going to just do x because they don't like t. Okay, come on. Okay, so that's our y2. And you can see that does track very precisely until this thing starts to fade out and not grow as fast as the exponential. Okay, so it's the fact that these guys are close together is what I'm recording there. Okay, so that's the second fact. Let me go back to my live presentation here. Okay, that um, the far left is just exponential growth and so that means r is the growth rate it's the ordinary exponential growth rate with the base e here um, for t way to the left very large negative anyway well you're still in the growth phase okay before it starts to, to taper off okay now the b here it's not as easy to give a nice significance to the b Okay, and what I'll just say is that we usually are going to find B from the data, from at least like one data point. Okay, so let me show you that. Um, what we could, what we can see is it influenced what this constant was here, but I think it's best to just kind of find it from the data. So let me show an example of that. The book, our, the book I use to teach from, just plops down a model and gets some conclusions from that. I don't think that's very useful. I don't think it's quite enough to, to do. What we want to do is we model, want to model uh, <clears throat> uh, growth with an initial exponential phase Uh, that's proportional to, remember this symbol means proportional to, e to the 0.2t. So, for example, remember what the significance of the 0.2 is. Pretend that this is money, that's the interest rate, 20%. So this is continuous compounding with 20%. So roughly 20% growth per time period, let's say per year. So something like on the order of 20% interest or 20% growth per year, okay? Uh, but with a carrying capacity, or in other words, an absolute maximum that you'll never actually quite reach, but you'll get close to it, of 800. And such that y at time 0, to be somewhat convenient, is 200. So for a long time before 0, you've been growing roughly at 20%. You catch it when you start your stopwatch at 200, say $200 maybe, and you're hoping for exponential growth in your money, but later on you discover, oh, it actually petered out and just sort of stabilized near 800. Okay, what is the formula going to be for that? So it's coming up 200 here, and then steep, and I've made a claim, we, I may or may not do that in the next video, that it's going to start uh, getting less steep at 400. That's called an inflection point, because it flexes there, something you talk about a lot in calculus, and then maxes out at 800. Okay, and in this range, it looked like continuous compounding with 20% interest, which is pretty sweet, okay? But unfortunately, you don't get the usual benefit of 20% interest. So what's the function going to be? What's the formula going to be for that? Okay, well, we this tells us A, done. This tells us R, done. That's a nice thing. So we know that this is just Y equals 800 over 1 plus B E to the minus 0.2t. And remember, that's the minus because you put it in a denominator and to counteract that, um, you have to put a minus there. Okay, and we saw a little bit about why that made sense. Okay, so now the one additional piece of information I haven't used is that it goes through 0, 200. 
it's exactly enough to, to figure out one more parameter. So, I think I can get rid of that. As always with modeling, if there's data to be used and there's unknown parameters in your model, plug in the data to find the, the parameter and do, do the required algebra. Now here, I made it a little easy on us. Because we're going to plug in t equals 0, this exponential, which in principle could be some kind of funky number, is going to go away. Now, in more general things, you might have y of 7 equals 200, and you're going to have to plug in uh, t equals 7 into here. But here, I'll just emphasize, e to the 0, that just becomes 1. Okay, It's not like it's a lot harder, it's just the numbers aren't going to be as pretty. Okay, so now that means if I cross multiply the 1 plus b and then divide by the 200, they just switch places. Hey, that's just 4, and so b equals 3. Okay. So notice it has to do with the ratio of the B is really take the ratio of the carrying capacity divided by your T equals zero amount and subtract one. It seems kind of random, uh, but that's just the way the B works. Okay. I wouldn't memorize that at all. I would just say, hey, it's an unknown parameter. I can solve because I can I have a data point to solve for. So what this is, it should be Y equals eight hundred over 1 plus 3 e to the minus 0.2t. So for example, we could use that to predict and say, okay, what would, we know y of 0, okay, what would y of, um, let's say y of 8 be? And you can just plug it in. It should be bigger, 800 over 1 plus 3 e to the minus 8 times 0.2 is 1.6. Um, I guess I can erase that, even though it's so nice. Okay. And what's that going to be? We could go to the lovely calculator, uh, and we're going to go 800 over 1 plus 3 times e to the minus, got to use the right minus sign, 1.6. Oops. Uh, ah! Hello. Um, it deleted more than I thought it should. And we get about 50. Okay. So, um, about, y of 8 is about, uh, and something is weird. Oh, you know what? That's an 80. My bad. I was like, so that was, the reason I knew that was wrong is that, that's much less than 200, and I know it's supposed to be bigger. Good example of error checking on the calculator, to be quite honest. Okay. So I'm going to insert, I think you all know what's going to happen here. It's just going to add, just going to change the decimal point. There we go, 500, about 500. So we were at 200, eight years later, let's say, we're at 500, on our way to eventually getting very near 800. Okay, so that's an example of once you've got the model, using it to make a simple prediction. In the next video, I'll do uh, show a little more algebraically why all this magic happened.